In this lesson, we get started with a tool called OWASP ZAP, and ZAP stands for Z Attack Proxy, and it is a free open source penetration testing tool being maintained under the umbrella of the OWASP organization. And if you're not familiar with OWASP, definitely check it out. Now, ZAP is designed specifically for testing web applications and is both flexible and extensible with plugins and custom scripts. And as the name implies, ZAP is what's known as a man in the middle proxy. Basically, it stands between the tester's browser and the web application so that it can intercept and inspect messages sent between the browser and the web application. So this is extremely helpful when pen testing because it allows us to inspect and modify the contents of a message and then forward the packets onto the destination. So this means that even if the application has security mechanisms on the front end, we can bypass them and communicate directly with the back end. And this, by the way, is one of the reasons that we need to have multiple layers of security. You can have the most secure front end in the world and an attacker could simply bypass that layer of security and go directly to your back end. In any case, Zap comes pre-installed in Kali, so you shouldn't have to install anything else for this to work. So let's go ahead and pull up Zap. When we first open it, it will give us a few different options. The first option is to persist this session with a name based on the current timestamp, and with the second option, persisting this session as well, but you get to specify the name and the location. The third option and final option is if you do not want to persist this session, maybe because you're just exploring for the first time, you have no need to save that session. And then finally, you can remember your choice so that OWASP Zap does not ask you again. For this video, I will select yes, I want to persist the session with the name based on the current timestamp. Next, it will ask us to manage our add-ons, including with the marketplace. Now I do see here that there are some add-ons that have some updates, so let's go ahead and update all of them. And technically, I could let the updates run in the background and close this window, but since I don't have a whole lot of updates, it should go pretty fast, so let's go ahead and just fast forward through it. Once complete, I can close this window and we can go ahead and get started. Instead of doing a walkthrough of Zap at this point, I'll just point out that we could do an automated scan of a web app target, and we can also manually explore. Now, automated scans crawl the target application to find potential issues, while the manual exploration is what it sounds like. It is a way for you to manually explore your target. Now, since we launched the OWASP Juice Shop app from a prior lesson, we can simply type the URL here. And then we can specify which browser to use, and I'll keep it at Firefox for now. Then we click on Launch Browser. And by launching the browser this way, Zap automatically configures it to proxy through Zap, making it so that you won't have to worry about certificate validation warnings for sites that use HTTPS. Keep in mind though that you could configure your regular browser to proxy through Zap and use that instead, but this does make it easier. And as you open up the browser, you should see a welcome to Zap HUD pop-up. You can either continue to your target or you can take the HUD tutorial. I really recommend that you take the HUD tutorial to get started, but I won't be showing you that walkthrough since it is self-guided. If you have any issues at all with the steps that we just completed, please let us know in the forums on cyber.com because this is an important step to complete if you want to follow along with the hands-on demonstrations throughout this course. So we definitely want to make sure that you have OWASP Zap up and running and good to go. But if you don't have any issues, please complete this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.